YouTube channel, you, you know how much I love working on tires. Love it. Tubes, it's my, it's my passion in life. So what is this, you may ask? Uh, the Kingsong 18L originally and the XL originally came with a 2000 watt motor. A very smooth, powerful motor. But Kingsong has recently uh, started using an upgraded 2200 watt motor, similar to what's in a Kingsong 16X. They have this now in the 18 series. And uh, all the reviews I've read about it is everyone's been very pleased with the upgrade. Uh, Jason from eWheels, if you bought your 18L or XL from him, he's offering uh, this motor upgrade at a very reasonable price of $150. So I figured, why not, man? Why not give it a shot? So this is going to be documenting my journey to do so. Okay, we're going to remove my EUC Army front kickstand from this. It would uh, just kind of get in the way, I believe, so we're going to take that off first. Okay, so like I mentioned, I, I um, performed the battery upgrade on this unit, so I have some familiarity with the basics of how it comes apart. Um, Got to pop these LED covers off first to get access to the screws that are used to um, hold the sides on. So we're going to take that off and carefully disconnect the connectors. Okay, so all of these uh, screws here have to come out. There's also some hidden screws here underneath the pads themselves, the top edge of the pad. If you've never uh, been inside of your 18L or XL before, you're going to have some adhesive there. But there's a screw there. Fortunately, my pad is ripping a little bit. Yeah, there's three screws here. One, two, three, and then down here, there's two more. One, two. So all those have to come out. I'm gonna see how well this this um, bit works with these screws. You definitely, you definitely don't wanna screw them out, but if you have one that fits, you can take them out a lot faster. Sometimes it's easier to take them out with a power drill, but you might wanna put them in by hand so you don't strip them. All right, I'm gonna get these all out. They're all identical, which is nice. The uh, screws that are up here under the pad are, are recessed, so this screwdriver here is actually magnetic, which is kind of helpful. All right, so all those screws are out, so this side should come off at this point without much fuss. And just make sure you're not catching these uh, LED wires as you're working the case off, but there you go. One side off. So we're going to Close the pedals, carefully flip it over, keeping my hand on the battery pack because since I replaced it, it probably would fall out rather easily. If you've never replaced your battery pack, it would probably stay in, stay in place for you. All right, I'm going to be doing the exact same thing on this other side. All right, all those screws are out, so the other side should come loose as well. All right, so... We're going to disconnect the uh, battery, just to be safe. And then there's a, there's a wire connection on both sides for the motor. So we're gonna remove this side. And, um, well, I guess while we're on this side, before we flip it, I'm gonna remove these six substantial uh, screws that hold the pedal hangers in. And you wanna make sure that you have a bit that is sized appropriately so you don't wind up stripping this. So I need to go get a bigger one. All right, as you would expect, these are in tight. You know, I, have, I have pretty good forearm and you know, slash grip strength. And I had to really use most of what I had to get this sucker broken loose. All right, so you have that your um, your screw and a little lock washer. So keep those together. One down, five more to go. Oh man, oh man. Whew, really tight. 
definitely make sure that you have an appropriate screwdriver to do this because you don't you definitely don't want to strip this out because you have to have all available um, leverage to get this out okay the lock washer and that one seems to be staying put all right so i'm going to get these out and then we're going to flip it over and work on the other side man these feel like someone put them in with a freaking torque wrench god <sighs> I mean, I'm, I'm leaning on it with all my weight to make sure that it doesn't strip out. And I'm kind of almost using two hands to, to turn on it. This part of it could definitely be a problem for some people. If you uh, don't have the proper tools or strong, strong rotational strength in your forearms. Okay, got all those out luckily without stripping it. So now we are going to try to carefully flip it over. Keeping my hand on the battery so it doesn't fly out. And, okay. And we are now reversed. So we're gonna, again, disconnect the battery. The motor cable on this side is a, a smaller cable. We're just gonna disconnect that. So the motor is now completely disconnected. So now we just got to fight with these uh, additional six screws and then we should be ready to have some magic happen. All right, so this is the technique I'm using. One hand on the screwdriver, other hand on the screwdriver, body weight leaning on the screw, turn with both hands and uh, it, it comes loose. If you had a screwdriver with a slightly big, bigger head on it so um, you get a little bit more leverage, that might be helpful as well. Okay, so all six are out. So now, this should, I emphasize on should, want to slide out of the case at this point. So let's, this is really hard to do with the battery being loose. I should just take this battery out. That's what I should do. All right, battery's coming out. Let's find a place to put the battery on the floor. Right. We're gonna take this other battery out too. Okay, battery's out. Let's see if we can get this sucker out. There we go, it's coming. Careful with your wires. All right, she's out. Nice, huh? There you go. Definitely easier than what you would go through uh, on a on a uh, gotway to do the same thing. Definitely easier. Okay, so really, all I have to do now is get the pedal hangers off the um, the motor. Um, it has some big Wampin Allen screws on there. I have a feeling I'm going to need something with a lot of torque to get that off. Just a feeling. So I got to see what I got. All right, so here's my rig to get this off. This is a hex drive. Um, is this a six? Looks like it's a six. Size six hex drive. It was tight, but um, I was able to break it loose without like banging on it. So I think all I need to do is just loosen this block enough that it can slide off the axle. Got lots of goop in there. That fit through? Yes, it does. Okay. This is such a better design than what Gotway uses, you know, with their freaking shims that come loose. Uh, I have no idea why Gotway cannot go to a, a better design for their axles or for their hangers or pedal hangers. All right, so got the one side off. Just going to do the other side and I'll be right back. Okay, audio sold wheel. Um, 
our old motor, but oh, you know what though? I gotta get the tire off, don't I? I sure do. So um, let's get this tire off. And if you are a long time viewer of my YouTube channel, you, you know how much I love working on tires. Love it. Tubes, it's my, it's my passion in life. It's like if I could quit my job and do nothing but change tires all day long, I would do it. I'm lying. Okay, tire off. The real trick is for me to be able to do this without puncturing the tube. I probably just jinxed myself. All right, tire and tube is off. Old wheel is out. If you're interested in buying a Kingsong 18L stock motor, be sure to let me know. All right. Well, now all we have to do is get it back on, onto the, uh, the new motor. Okay, we have the tube reinserted. We have one side of the tire back on. Now we just have to get the other side seated without damaging the inner tube. So I'm going to try to get as much of this back on by hand as possible. I've actually had some success doing this in the past when I uh, fought with the 16X for three hours. This is... The key is to kind of keep the spot that you've already worked in place by putting your crotch on it. But this this tire actually is not as tight as um, other ones I've worked on. This actually doesn't feel too bad at all. I think I can get this on just with my hands. Maybe, I'm close. Okay, crotch in place. Apply twisting force with forearms. Extreme twisting force. There, it's on. Nice. All right, let's put a little air in this thing, see if it holds. All right, we got seven and a half pounds and it's holding steady. Let's put a little bit more in. I actually like, 26 pounds has become my sweet spot for my wheels. So let's see if we can go all the way up. All right, looking good. No hissing. It's holding pressure. I have to tell you, that's uh, that's the easiest um, tire slash uh, migration I've ever done. That tire was not that hard to get on at all. All right, it looks pretty good. Okay, so now we need to put the brackets on. So. I'm trying to hold it so the, the um, axle is off the table, so I'm not resting on the wires, not resting on the axle. That just seems like a smart thing to do. So we're going to put this on. This is very easy because you have a flat, two flat spots to the axle and a round. And there goes the, the camera. You have two flat spots on the axle and two round spots. So... I can lock the camera in place. So I'm gonna just kind of work my way back and forth, try to make sure that my tightening is kind of even. Let's see, I wonder how tight that's supposed to be against the axle. or against the motor, I can say. Okay, yeah, there, there's a little detente there that holds it. It can only go so far. It doesn't go right against the motor itself. So another smart design move by Kingsong. Just push it till it can go no further. All 
All right, and then I'm just gonna tighten these up good, flip it around and do the other side. Okay, one side on, one side to go. Oh, just one little tip. Um, if you get your new motor and you look at this and you, and you see these numbers that you see, it says KS18ZX 2000 watt. Don't be alarmed. Jason did inform me that even though it says 2000 watt, the, Z, the ZX designation is what means that you have the 2200 watt motor. So yeah, just a little, little tip. Okay, there you go. Pedal hangers mounted to my 2200 watt motor. So now it's time to put it back in the shell. So I was going to say uh, when I was taking it apart to make sure that you uh, pay attention to where front and back is and, and, and uh, how the motor is oriented, but really I realized that it doesn't really matter because it can only go one way because you have different cables on both sides. So this is the motor cable side here. So we're going to make sure that we have the cables going that way. Now the only thing that's going to be tricky is fishing these cables through as you're jamming the motor back up at the same time. Yeah, that could be, that could be something I might need a Cindy assist on. Let's see. Maybe if I, maybe if I can get it just started here. Just started. All right, there we go. Started and then fish the cables up. Okay, there's that one. But then you have to get the one that's on the bottom too. Not exactly graceful, but I think that'll get the job done. Slowly. This might be better done on the ground, I think. Yeah, I think that, I think this is a better way to go about it. hangers and uh, yeah it'll slam right in <laughs> and, okay that's good that's seated we will now return to the table okay you can see my holes are lined up nicely so we're gonna be putting these screws in and we are going to make sure that they are very tight because they were very tight to come off so we'll make sure that they are once again very tight It'll take a little while. I'll be back. Okay, so we're about an hour into the project, so I think we're making some pretty good progress. Um, you know, new motors in. I have these uh, snug but not tight. Now we're going to we're going to tighten these strongly, so they are in a similar state state of snugness as when we took them out. Because you don't want your pedal hangers to be loose. All right, that side is done. It's time to start hooking some wires back up. Um, let's get the battery pack. Let's put that back in place. Okay, this is the small wire side. And yeah, let's hook up the battery. I mean, I can, I'm just thinking out loud, I can hook up the battery and put the side on really to keep the battery in place at least a couple screws and then I can try it make sure everything powers on okay uh, before I complete the job but let's you know let's do that let's let's get these wires kind of tidied up and we're gonna put the side back on here we're just a couple screws just to hold it in just so the battery stays in place keeping keeping in mind that you want to make sure that you fish out your LED uh, your LED light connections prior to cinching down the case. Because I remember when I did this before, I did not do that. And I wound up taking the case off multiple times. All right, there we go, sticking out. Okay. Okay, I just have four screws on this side temporarily to hold it in place. And try to not knock over your entire table. And then lift it up, spin it, throw the entire tools on the floor. And let's do the other side. OK, 
Okay, got this side reconnected. Motor connection, battery connection. And uh, same deal. Gonna put the side on. And uh, just connect a couple, and then we're gonna just set it upright and just make sure that it powers on, because that's kind of important. All right, here goes nothing. Don't have the LEDs hooked up, I don't think I need to. Come on, please work. All right, it's balancing. That's a good thing. All right, so at that point, I feel confident enough to put the rest of my screws into the sides. And then once this is all done, there's some uh, software related stuff that has to be done. So let me, uh, let me speed through this part. You don't need to watch me put screws in. All right, hit trolleys as well. Now we gotta go do the software part. Okay, so um, what I'm doing is I'm running the Kingsong Engineering app. That's instructions that Jason includes uh, with the uh, the motor. Basically, you have to go in and you have to flash it with a different firmware, uh, the KS18LH version of the firmware. I'm also at the same time loading the 2.0 version of the firmware, which I've heard rave reviews about. So let's see what happens. It's uh, it's running right now. Those progress lights uh, keep filling up until it's done. All right, almost done. All right, so just like you always do with um, Kingsong firmware, after uh, you apply the firmware, you have to do the horizontal calibration. I did that. So we're gonna see how this feels. It works. That's a nice thing, huh? I'm just curious if I'll feel a seat of the pants difference. Please decelerate. Whoa, that's a difference. I wonder if my uh, I wonder if my my thresholds got all reset with the new firmware. That's what it feels like. So let me go grab my phone quick and verify that. All right, let's try that again. It was it was reset to the factory defaults for speed. So let's. All right, we are going faster now. I set it to like a third alarm at 47 kilometers an hour and tilt back at 49, I believe. So I can already tell what they're talking about with how quiet this wheel feels. It doesn't have that whine that you're used to with so many wheels nowadays. It's, it is silent, wow. It's kind of weird because I'm testing out a new motor and new firmware at the same time. So obviously I'm going to need more testing and my battery and my GoPro is almost dead. So, but I did just want to make sure that stuff works. And it appears to be the case that it does. So smooth, man. Wow. All right, so my initial 60-second uh, review of the motor upgrade, two thumbs up. Feels really good. Got to get Dunkin' Donuts right under, the, under its belt, but I really like the way this feels. Combination of the firmware and the new motor. It's a win-win. All right, let's make this quick. My battery is almost dead. So, hope you found this video interesting. Definitely uh, was not as bad as, as it potentially could have been. I probably spent about an hour and a half of time taking it apart, switching it, and putting it back together. Not too bad. Um, only a very brief test afterwards, but it felt different. It felt stronger, and like I, like I said, so quiet. Um, quietest wheel I've ever ridden now. Um, can't wait to get some more miles on it. But if you did get your 18L or 18XL from eWheels, you definitely want to check it out. Um, I'll leave Jason's contact information in uh, the description below. It's always there actually, so not too hard to find. But uh, a worthwhile upgrade for sure. 150 bucks, can't go wrong. So if you found this video interesting, please give it a big thumbs up, helpful, whatever. If this is your first time visiting the channel, please consider subscribing. If you're gonna subscribe, might as well hit the notify bell, which is over there somewhere. 
And uh, feel free to leave your comments, suggestions, ideas, and thoughts below. If you've done this upgrade already, or if you're thinking about it, or if you're plan planning to do it, I'd like to uh, hear your feedback. That's all I have for you for now. Till next time, Duffman out. And now we get to clean up the mess. Clean up the mess. Clean up the mess.